Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and Facebook page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we will talk, talk about a very exciting and a challenging topic ocular tilt reaction and skew deviation ocular tilt reaction and skew deviation but before i go into the subject let me introduce a basic concept the nature has provided with us with a wonderful reflex the vestibular ocular connections the vestibular ocular reflex and ocular tilt reactions Imagine if my head were to turn to right side, my eyes also turns along with the head, then the image appears blurred. So when the head turns to the right, the eye should turn to the left, opposite and of equal magnitude. Why this is so? Because when I look straight, the image falls on the fovea and it appears very sharp. But when, my, when I turn my head to the right and keep looking at that object, if my eyes also turn along with the head, the image appears blurred and therefore I should move in the direction opposite to the head movement but with the equal magnitude. Same thing appears with the vertical eye movements or with vertical movements of the head also. When head goes down, eye should go up. When head goes up, the eye should go down. Same thing happens with the rotational movement also. Example, when I am going in the bike and turning and taking a right turn my head will turn to the right side so my eyes should go to the left side so when my head is lowered on the right side the left eye should go up and the right eye should come down then only I'll be able to focus the image sharply onto the fovea and the image appears sharp so this is known as ocular tilt reaction and when there is vertical misalignment one eye going upwards, the other going downwards, you call that as Q deviation. So, basically we have these vestibular ocular connections when there is a eye movement and a head movement to study the image on the fovea, the eye moves to the opposite but with the equal magnitude as that of the head movement. Right? So, to understand these vestibular ocular connections, we need to understand the two basic reflexes one is the vestibulo ocular connection one is the oculo vestibular reflex or OCR doll's head movement or doll's eye movement second is the ocular tilt reaction the oculocephalic reflex connects the eighth nerve with the third nerve on the same side and sixth nerve on the opposite side and it helps to move the eyes horizontally so when I turn my head to the right side my right vestibule gets stimulated it connects the third nerve on the same side and sixth nerve on the opposite side and therefore when my head turns to the right my eyes will go to the left so this oculocephalic reflex helps to move the eyes horizontally this is otherwise known as a doll's eye movement now let's talk about a very fascinating topic the ocular tilt reaction when I turn my head what happens the eighth nerve this time connects with the third and fourth cranial nerves it connects with the third and fourth cranial nerves to move the eyes vertically and torsionally so in the ocular tilt reaction the vestibule connects with the third nerve and fourth nerve to turn the eyes vertically and torsionally so imagine when I am riding on a bike and turning to the right so my head turns to the right so what happens the vestibule stimulates the left eye which goes up and the right eye which goes down so here it the superior rectus and superior oblique are stimulated so the eyes goes up and then in taut. This eyes goes down inferior rectus and extorts inferior oblique and the head is tilted to the same side. So this is known as ocular tilt reaction. Right. So having understood the basics now let's go. 
to some of the basic questions. As I've said, what happens when the bike rider turns to ride steep curve? So when the bike rider takes a steep right turn, he is bending like this on the right side. So what happens? There is right ocular or right ocular tilt reaction, wherein the left superior rectus and superior oblique are stimulated. So the eyes go up, left eye goes up and then in taut, the right is, eye is inferior rectus and inferior oblique. So it comes down and extorts and the head is tilted on the right side. So this is ocular tilt reaction. Because of this, the images fall exactly on the fovea and the image does not appear to be blurred. The second question is that in Wallenberg's syndrome, that is lateral medullary syndrome, when the medulla oblongata and the vestibular nucleus gets affected, the eye on the same side goes down, the other eye goes up. This is known as Q deviation. What is the mechanism? To understand the mechanism, let's go into the details. Right. Now, imagine the Wallenberg syndrome, for example, right. The, there is a right utricular lesion, example Wallenberg syndrome. So what happens? It leads to the unopposed action of the left vestibular apparatus. If there is Wallenberg syndrome or any lesion on the right side, right vestibule, it leads to the unopposed stimulation of the left vestibular nerve utricular nerve. So what does this do now? It connects with the Wallenberg syndrome. It connects with the left superior rectus and superior oblique with that of the inferior rectus and inferior oblique on the right side. So superior rectus and superior oblique there is it has a movement upwards and in torts. Here on the opposite side there is a move, movement downwards and x torts and head tilts to the same side. So this is the ocular tilt reaction. So in, in pathology like Wallenberg syndrome, medulla oblongata lesion, the eye is the one which is looking towards the, towards the inferior aspect. So the eye which is looking onto the inferior aspect, the lesion is that in that particular area, Wallenberg syndrome. So what are the components of right ocular tilt reaction? So when the left vestibular nerve or when the left utricular nerve is stimulated it results in the right ocular tilt reaction so what are the three basic components of this right ocular tilt reaction as i said the first component is the large intorsion of the left eye so when the left utricular nerve is stimulated the superior oblique is basically activated there is intorsion simultaneously the right side inferior oblique is stimulated so there is extorsion. So on the left side intorsion, on the right side extorsion. When the left utricular nerve or vestibular apparatus is stimulated. Second, the superior rectus on the left side is stimulated so there is an elevation of the eye on the left side. Here the inferior rectus is stimulated, there is a depression on the right side. And head is tilted to the right side, right head tilts. And therefore, when there is a lesion right side lesion, right utricular or vestibular lesion, example Wallenberg's, there is unopposed strong stimulation of the left vestibular or utricular nerve which results in the superior rectus, superior oblique on the left side and inferior rectus and inferior oblique on the right side with the head tilt, head tilt onto the right side. Right. Now, how do we localize? The lesion can be in the medulla oblongata or sometimes in the pons and midbrain. So how do you localize the lesion? So the localization of the lesion, the autolith ocular pathway. To understand this, you need to understand the ocular autolith pathway. For example, let's take the right side. Right side eighth now, vestibular nerve comes from the right side. It connects the right vestibular nucleus on the medulla oblongata on the same side. And then it ascends, crosses in the pons, it goes to the MLF and then supplies the third nerve, fourth nerve on the left side. So the, the autolith ocular pathway, example this time we will take the example of right side, it comes from the vestibular apparatus, goes to the vestibular nucleus on the same side of the medulla oblongata, but after that it crosses, it crosses across the midline goes to the left side, 
pons through MLF and midbrain supply the third and fourth nerves. And therefore, if there is a lesion on the right side, the left vestibular, there is an unopposed action of the left vestibular and uticular nerve. So eyes will go up, down and this side the eyes will be looking down and extraught. So in Wallenberg syndrome on the right side in this example, the eyes, the eye on the Wallenberg syndrome side will be looking downwards. But if it is the lesion in the pons and midbrain, since the tract has already crossed over, the eye that is looking downwards will be on the opposite side of the lesion. So because the ocular, autolith ocular pathway initially is uncrossed, coming from the same side to the vestibular nucleus, uh, Wallenberg syndrome on the right side, if it is present, it will stimulate the left uticular nerve and vestibular apparatus and the eyes, one eye left eye will go upwards, the right eye will go downwards and therefore the right eye looking downwards, the eye looking downwards is the side of the Wallenberg syndrome that is in the medulla oblongata. But when it comes to pons and midbrain, since the tract has already crossed over to the opposite side, if the lesion is in the pons or midbrain, third and fourth nerve nucleus or interstitial nucleus of Kajal, the eye that is looking downwards is the is the site of the manifestation of the lesion which is found on the opposite side. So this is how we localize the lesion whether it is in the in the medulla oblongata or in the pons and midbrain. So because of this reflex ocular tilt reaction because of this reflex only when we take turns like going on a bike on the right side or on the left side when the head goes to one side the eyes goes also to the on the opposite side the other side for example if my right head turns on the right side my eyes will go turn on the opposite side left side so left eye will be looking upwards right eye will be looking downwards and therefore the image exactly falls on the fovea and appears sharp when the rotational movement is there vertical and torsional if it is horizontal movement right side or left side the eighth nerve connects with third and sixth nerves so when my right when the head turns to the right side the eyes goes to the left side so that the image falls exactly on the fovea and appears sharp if not for these reflexes vestibular ocular reflexes the oculocephalic reflex or ocular tilt reaction we will have blurring of image whenever we move the head either horizontally or vertically or turning to one side or this side example when you are riding the bike so such a wonderful reflex god has given so that the image appears sharp whatever the head movement may be i hope you have enjoyed the lecture and if you have enjoyed the lecture please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts if you have any doubts you can post it on my youtube channel i'm i'll be more than happy to reply to your comments so kindly like, post your comments and subscribe to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.